welcome to Balance Boldly, the podcast where we get bold about our balance and campaign to shake the shame that stunts our growth. I'm your host, Nikita Thigpen, balance and relationship advisor for bold women in business and a few brave men. The Balance Boldly podcast is sponsored by All About Leverage integrates LinkedIn and social selling innovation to build power networks, open more doors, and maximize client acquisition. From on-site to virtual training programs, concierge social marketing programs, LinkedIn executive profile optimization, speaking engagements, power networking groups, and LinkedIn coaching, All About Leverage is a full-service LinkedIn and social selling resource. Learn more at allaboutleveragellc.com. This season is all about our commitment challenges. All those things and everything that adds and subtracts from our ability to follow through. It's not something that many of us want to talk about, but it is something that plagues us. It sits in the back of our head and is a constant tape playing over and over again. Why didn't I finish that? Why did I start that? What was I thinking? I know I should have accomplished it by now. Achievements that we missed out on, achievements that we missed the opportunity to recognize were achievements because we were so busy thinking about all the other things that didn't get done. Commitment is a pretty big deal. Some people have commitment issues where they overcommit. I know I am an overcommitter. I see the whole big picture as one of my gifts. I can see everything about where things should be, how we can get there, the strategy to do it. And then I'll decide, you know what? I think I can do 10 of those things in 24 hours. (laughs) Forgetting the fact that there are, I don't know, life challenges that are actually happening, not to mention the urgent small fires with a little bit of smoke pulling up out of the corner from, you know, maybe a financial issue that you neglected or uh, even a health issue that you've been meaning to follow up with. Oh yeah, I got to get back to the doctor. I got to go for my checkout. Checkup. Not saying that anything has happened or is wrong, but those are those small fires that are slowly, you know, in the corner. You thought they were smothered and done, but they're really just literally kind of being in a position where they're about to like turn into something major, whatever that freeze would be. I was thinking smoldering, but that wasn't it. But you know what I'm talking about. Some people like me have a tendency of overcommitting. It's one of the things that keep me up at night. It's one of the reasons that I'm so focused on balance. It's the reason that I'm an expert in it. It's because I'm constantly thinking of ways to do things better for it, not just for the efficiency of it, which is very important, but also so that I can enjoy it. So I can prioritize literally everything that matters to me. So I can make sure that I'm walking my walk and talking the talk and not just standing on a stage preaching it to everyone else, but really living it. And when I fail, and I do, I pick myself up and I look at, okay, what just happened there? What was, what was that? Why did you add three more things to your list knowing that you were having you know, a full plate, a full plate times two already? What are you thinking? First of all, I, Nikita Thigpen, am not that coordinated physically. So when I'm trying to overwhelm myself, not intentionally, of course, but when I'm doing things like that, I have to recognize if you're not physically that coordinated, do you want to really, you know, put all of your energy into mental coordination and overstimulating yourself so that you drop everything? Because my business is to hold it. My business is to balance. So I, myself, have to be really careful with that. But then I run into some other people that are somewhat similar to me, and there are some people who have commitment challenges in a different way. Those commitment challenges are not so much of overextending, overcommitting, too many yeses. Theirs are not enough. They're sitting in a space and a place where they're afraid to commit to anything. You know, there's always an extreme, right? There's the the long continuum of things. There's a continuum on the side where you're just like saying yes to way too much and managing way too many things. Not necessarily yes to other people, maybe too many yeses to yourself. You know, too many things that you just shouldn't have put on the plate at the same time. It can all get done, just not at the same time. But then there's the people on the other far reaching side of the continuum 
who just refuse to give a full answer. You ask them to do something, they're like, oh, you know, let me think about it. I'm not sure. They're kind of waving in that soft language. They're muddling in the middle. Heck, I don't even really think they're muddling. They're really just kind of playing on the side and afraid to put their pinky toe in the water. And they literally don't get much done because they're constantly saying, I'm not sure. Hmm. What are all the not so great things that could happen if I if I do this? What about if I don't do it? They just kind of sit in this space of what if and they never move forward. Um, I will honestly say that both people, both versions of those people could be stuck in their dream. I could easily have gotten stuck in my dream because of being an overdoer, an overachiever, an overextender. And because of doing all of that, never really fully, fully kind of living out my true intention with a thing, skipping past the gratefulness of what did get accomplished, the opportunities that I had, moving so fast from problem one to problem two that I don't even take a minute to see how did problem one really help me? Was problem one even something I need to actually have addressed or could that have been something I could have delegated or had someone else help me with or support me with instead of trying to do it all myself, which is a major, major issue that I had worked with for the greater part of my life. I won't say I'm completely healed from it, but definitely in a much better space. Thank you, Jesus. Um, with, with that said, there's the other side of those people, like I said, who could also be stuck in their dream because they're not moving at all. They're just kind of like, oh, well, I think my dream is is to, to have a business. I think my dream is to become you know, the VP or the executive or the senior level or to take the skills that I have here and take it to this other company that I'm really interested in doing or to support a nonprofit. But they're always in this kind of, I think, I'm not sure, what if I do and it doesn't work, and they never move. Both of those type of people at very different extremes of the continuum can get stuck if they don't start believing in the possibilities of what can happen if they do things first, period, second, efficiently. efficiently. As a dreamer who definitely believes in myself, my challenge was always in the planning stage. I needed to plan for me, not for the me times 10 that I would assume I would be the next morning. You know, I do believe I have superpowers. I really do believe that. And we can get into that conversation another time. But sometimes I overextend my superpower because of poor planning. And I always have to back up and say, oh, Nikita, why did you plan to do 12 recordings today when really you needed to cap it at five? You know, especially when you have 20 other things to do. You have a speaking engagement, a public speaking class to teach and blah, 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 blah. The whole list goes on. On the other side, I could easily, if I had been the other type of person that just wouldn't commit to anything, I could just keep planning to one day plan. <laughs> I'm a plan to plan when I'm going to potentially doing it. Instead of saying, um, a friend of mine, um, Suzanne Gee, she's going to love this shout out. She says, instead of one day, someday, it's now. So stop saying like, one day I will, someday I will, it's now. And we're going to actually interview her in a few more months. So I'm looking really forward to having that conversation because she's an amazing person, but I digress. So today we're really looking at that continuum of, of people and, and everyone in, in between. I have a really good associate of mine who I know he struggles with. He's not nearly as bad as overextending, although he has a lot of overextending tendencies. And he's not quite at the other side of the extreme where he just doesn't want to commit to anything. He's almost kind of pseudo in the middle and, and not in a necessarily a good way, although I can't be mad at him. It's work for him. He's successful. You know, things are moving in his favor. But when he's pulling back the curtain and we're having these conversations of, you know, what is your, your balance challenge today? What, what's the struggle that you're having today? He'll say, you know, the reality is I keep changing my mind. So he'll take on all these projects and he'll start all the, he'll actually start all these projects. He's committing to starting them. But what he won't do is committing to literally running with them full throttle. So he'll put it out there. He is a business owner. I won't give out his name and information until he gives me permission. But he'll, let's say he starts three different programs or three different services, you know, related to one business because he has multiple businesses that he owns and he'll do it and he'll start it and he'll get all the research done. He's very efficient with his team and delegation and all those things. And then he'll put it out there. And as soon as he puts it out there after about two weeks, and I'm not exaggerating, 
he's already moved on to another project, like project two, three, five, or 10, but he hasn't really pushed project one. No one really knows about it, except for the people who might've been a part of their earlier stage conversation when he had a lot of energy behind it, when he was building up that, you know, that, uh, that extension muscle and like excited and talked about it. But it's almost like as soon as he gets it out of his system, as soon as his part is really done, all the promotion, which is, he has a team for this. So it's not like he doesn't have people to do it. So that is not his issue. But as soon as it's done, the project is out of his system, is complete. It, the the way he saw the baby being birthed is born. He doesn't want to raise it. <laughs> he's just like, oh, done, I'm good. And he's moved on to, to project two, 10 and 15, like I said. And when I'm talking to him, when we're having these conversations, I'm always like, well, why? You know, you have all these amazing projects that are out there, but not enough people know about them. It's like being a hidden secret. What's happening? He was like, you know, I really think I have a commitment issue. It's almost like I don't want to get stuck just nurturing that one baby when I have all these other babies that I want to make. And obviously he's not talking about, you know, physical children, thankfully. You know, we don't want him just populating the earth. But he is talking about, in his particular case, a baby. But how many of us do that as well in other areas of our life, right? We create something, you know, we created a, a book, we created a movie script, we created a TV series, even if it's just in your head. Maybe you did or you didn't actually get it on paper, which is a different part of the conversation. But you've created this whole thing, and as soon as you've gotten it out of your system, so to speak, even though you haven't nurtured it so that other people could benefit from it, so other people could see this baby grow up and give value to the world in its own way, we just kind of walk away from it. And then there's a little bit of, of guilt. Um, and I would even go as far to say, you know, because, you know, Balance Bully is about shaking the shame. I will say that there's even a little bit of a yuck that sticks, sticks, sticks from you from that guilt that kind of uh, brews into the beginning aspects of shame. And the shame doesn't show itself until we get called on it, right? So if you're like, uh, I'm just going to call him Dave. That's not his real name, but we're going to call him Dave. If you're like Dave and you're kind of in that space where you create, create all these things, you are overextending yourself a little bit, but that's not really your issue. And it's not that you won't make up your mind to commit to start something. It's really that you won't commit to nurturing something. You've kind of even finished it, but you haven't nurtured it all the way through, like using that kind of kid analogy that we're going with, right? And if you're like Dave and you're doing that, the shame happens when you're in a, an event, a room, on a phone call, watching a webinar, maybe even watching one, a, you know, a TV show on Hulu or something, when someone else has said that they've just done what you did or they're doing what you were supposed to do if you're on the other extension of, you know, what if this happens? What if I don't, you know, what if I do it? And, you know, whatever, right? Or the overextended, you got all these balls in the air, but not enough of the right ones are getting complete in the timely fashion that they could be because it's just too much going on, right? But if you're like Dave, most of your shame happens when someone inadvertently shames you by exposing your inefficiency. Your inefficiency was really the fact that you know you had something great and you were purposed to carry it out and you decided not to. Now, I'm not talking about the people who are purposed to just create ideas. There are some people in the world that are just amazing at creating ideas. Hand it off. They're like surrogates, right? They're like, oh, yep, I'll you know, help you co-create. I'll birth it out for you and everything, but then I'm done. I'm not a part of any other part of that process. And they surrogate their way within that. However... If that's not your purpose, if that's not your role, and it's just a part of your gift, but it's not the full extension of your gift, then you are literally leaving people hanging hanging dry. But first, yourself, because you're when you're fulfilled, when you're walking in your purpose, when you're doing what you're supposed to do and executing to the fullest degree that you're supposed to, not compared to anyone else. Because again, some people are supposed to just be surrogates. Some people are supposed to be the midwife to midwife the surrogate through that process, you know, or, or even the birthing parents through that process. Everyone has a position and a role. And when you know yours, but you're only halfway fulfilling it because you're overextending or 
not saying enough, you're not, not believing in yourself enough to say a full yes to start the thing at all, if you can't get yourself to focus, to finish the nurturing process, to raise it up to the point that you're supposed to, that you're actually capable of because you're dealing with some other voids, then you have to really look at that. And the shame honestly comes when people call us out on it and not necessarily in a negative way, right? So in Dave's instance, he'll be called out because he'll be watching a movie and when we're having these conversations, he'll say it. Like I, I was watching on Hulu or something and you know, we have weird things that when I'm able to watch TV, which is very, very rare, we watch strange stuff. And you know, occasionally when we talk every once in a blue, we'll talk about like, what's, what's the episode that you're up on? And he'll be watching something, let's say like the Mindy Project and then He'll say like, you know, I was watching this and she started this, you know, OBGYN clinic out in California. And that was something that I, I started and then I just kind of sold it and I should have, you know, raised it up a little bit. Like it'll, it'll come out to him when he sees it happening um, to the fullness that it should happen for someone else, knowing that he could have been a part of that process. And it's not a jealous thing. It's not an envy thing. It's a recognition that he didn't finish. And that's something that I think many of us could really relate to, whether you're, again, on the one side of the overextension continuum towards the middle where he is or all the way at the other end of the what ifs, I'm not sure, uh, kind of, you know, the woulda, coulda, shouldas that kind of come out of that. But I want to take a moment to recognize that we have some amazing sponsors. This season is sponsored by All About Leverage that you've already heard. And I want to pause and give some homage to our episode sponsors. Be right back. Millennial Leadership, a global advising network powered by youadvise.me. Millennial Leadership is engaging today's leaders for career success one city at a time. Go to millennialleadership.uadvise.me for more information. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. You listeners are amazing. We are back on Balance Bully Podcast, the campaign to shake the shame. And where we left off is I was having a moment where I was um, trying to cover up some of my friends and my associates' names. We were giving some aliases to a friend of mine that I was using as an example, which I know he'll love when he hear the, hears this podcast, um, about you know, not finishing, you know, not being focused enough to finish if you are struggling in the commitment area with, but then actually seeing how to nurture and really see how well this kid could grow up, right? You know, your business, your idea, your profession, your career. You know, we were talking about entrepreneurs and business owners, business owners specifically because many of us are. That's what I am. That's what many of the listeners who have followed me from the Balance Beam podcast days forward are. But there's also many people who I know um, do and will listen because I'm claiming that. Hello. <laughs> will listen to this podcast that aren't necessarily entrepreneurs. Um, perhaps they're entrepreneurial leaders in the way that they think and the way that they run the companies that they work with at, in the mid and senior level uh, positions that they are, and some are career professionals, you know, in various lanes, engineering, sciences, biology, you name it, claim it, they have it, and they're still dealing with commitment issues that are very similar to this, you know, and some of the ways that may look is if you think about, you know, let's not talk about you, right? Let's, let's look at someone else you know, because we know it's not you. <laughs> let's look at the neighbor down the street whose kid is 22, 23, and has changed their uh, career tra trajectory like five times. The last time you talked to them around the holidays, they were in cosmetology school. The time before that, they were going to get a, a license in plumbing. The next time they were in college for film. And now this time you run into them, they're saying that they're, you know, deciding to be a librarian, you know, who knows? And it changes. So when people are young, when they're like under 25, it's expected, you know, we say, oh yeah, I remember, you know, I either was or wasn't completely dedicated to knowing or understanding what my passion would be and what I want to do. And it's fine. So we kind of give, we're forgiving when people are roughly, you know, somewhere between 22 and 25 or younger and they're waxing and waning around that. We're not nearly as forgiving when they are older, not just in chronological age, but when we have we would have expected based on some of the positions that they've had, based on maybe the family that they come from, their pedigree that they have, or maybe because of some um, introduction that we had to them, we met them in a certain part of their life, in a certain part of their career, that we're surprised 
and we sit back and we stare and we judge and we shame other people through our eyes, our looks, our glare, um, our thoughts, you know, not just our words, but we shame them because we're like, mm, you're struggling with this? You're in transition? Uh. And there's only these few little, um, I guess, boxes that we allow people to safely play in. You know, in 2008, everyone had a box to play in because of the crash that we had financially across the United States that affected many other areas of the world, right? So it was like, oh yeah, the economy's shifted, everything's done. We we understood that even the top tiered entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial leaders, executives, VPs, and professionals have fell on hard times and had to be in some kind of transition. We were forgiving around that time. Um, every year that there's a major election, we're a little bit more forgiving because people can anchor their transition to uh, the political unrest. You know, I'm not sure how this country is going to fare um, after January 18th or 28th or 14th or whenever the inauguration is, right? Like, I'm, I'm not sure. So we're already planning ahead. They'll anchor, whether it's true or not, they'll anchor it to something. But when there is nothing that we have given permission for other people to anchor their transition to, we shame them. We shame them. And we have to look at ourselves and why we think it's okay to shame other people when we ourselves are struggling with the fact that there is shame attached to our commitment challenges because maybe it was prompted by a transition, maybe because we're in the midst of one now, or maybe because we're on the, the back end of just going through something that was really roller coaster light and really just drained and we just don't have the energy to commit. Whatever your reason is, you don't want to be shamed but you shame other people. And when I say you, I have to look at myself too. I know I've, I have shamed my husband. I have shamed my kids. I have shamed really, really, really close friends to me through my thoughts, through my eyes. And with my husband specifically, I will be 100% honest and say, I know I've said it out my mouth, whether I was right or wrong, I know I've done it and I've left an impression. And we have to be really careful what impressions we leave on other people. Because you think it's as simple as, oh, well, at least I didn't say it this way, or I could have said it the other. But the reality is you're making a judgment about someone else, <laughs> probably because they've mirrored uh, an incident or an ideal situation that you wish you would have had, right? So when I say the incident, that's the other side. That's the flip side of the mirror of, you know, they're doing something that maybe you can relate to that you would hope that they didn't have to go through it. They didn't. And because you're so scared for them, you kind of shame them into correction, like the way that you do it. And then there's the other side, and that's not okay. Someone living your ideal life and they're living it out loud, maybe not picture perfect yet, you know, let's bring this home, let's bring it forward. There are many people who are working professionals, you know, at whatever level in their career, exec or not, um, that they're in, who have entrepreneurial goals, nonprofit goals, philanthropy goals, and you have these things and you want these things and perhaps your plate is just too full. Maybe you're overextending yourself. Maybe you're just at the other end of not committing. Oh, you know, I'll get to it later. I'm not sure about right now. You're kind of going through all those things. And then you come across, I don't know, a sister, a cousin, a brother, a spouse, a potential spouse, if you know, if you're in the dating game, um, a neighbor, a coworker, someone else is actually doing what you said you were going to do. So now you're playing the Dave game, right? Like now you're in the middle saying, mm, well, you know, I think you better be careful with, you know, putting all your eggs in one basket. How many people have heard that? How many people have said that to someone else? Be careful. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, I'm not saying it's not some validity to that statement because it is. You do want to be careful that you you are not not diversifying. You do want to diversify in every income. Have seven streams of income. That doesn't mean have seven different businesses. That's not necessarily what that means. But just making sure that you have income coming in from multiple streams. I get that. Making sure that when you go to college for a specific degree that may be very, very, very niche, that you also have a minor or something that could just diversify and expand your experience. I get it. But most of the time when we say it, and in the case of this hypothetical example, because it's only hypothetical, right? No one has ever said this. No one has ever done this. We will look at other people who are living our dream out loud and we'll shame them into thinking that they're wrong. 
You have done it. I know you've done it. You have a friend who's done it. You have a neighbor who's done it. A spouse, a kid who's done it. Your parents have done it to you. Somebody, you know, you can relate to this. I know you can, and I, I dang on sure can. You can definitely relate to it because you will sit there and say, "Oh well, you know, you got to be careful now. You know, is, is is this the right time to step out and do that? Should you have really invested that much money in that? Oh, what you gave? How much money to that? Mm, okay." Oh, you're spending a lot of time down at that shelter. You know, don't you have some other things to do? Now, mind you, they are making time to balance what matters to them in their life in that moment. And it's probably close to our heart. We wish we had time to volunteer. We wish we had, you know, X numbers of thousands of dollars to just give away to whatever cause that we're interested in. And I don't mean from a 401k investment, you know, moderate investment way. I don't mean from an occasional... Uh, stock, you know, let's let's look at that. I mean, from something from a very serious philanthropic level or from a heart space, a purpose space of just wanting to and not needing to. We wish we could have done that at that time. So we'll see someone else do it. We'll see someone else, you know, digging into their entrepreneurial endeavors, starting their passions, going back to their old creative ways, starting to even to run again, you know, to exercise it. They used to be a runner, got away from it for a while. Y'all connected on the, oh yeah, I used to, ha ha ha. Now they're doing it again. And now you're looking at them like, mm, I don't know how you make time for that. Maybe if you had more time for your marriage, you wouldn't have any, you know, like now we're having all kinds of side thoughts and conversations that hopefully only stayed with you and didn't go to someone else, but it's happening. And I know some of you are laughing right now because you can hear yourself saying it. You heard your neighbor say it. Somebody just says you, you can recognize it. But what I'm saying is we have to shake the shame. We have to stop it. It starts with us. We have to stop shaming others first. So we can literally back up, get a look at the good that's on us, all that gooky stuff, that guilt, that frustration, that lack of vulnerability, always posing and posturing. We have to then look at ourselves, but it starts with stopping shaming other people. It's ridiculous. It's past, like past old. It's, it's beyond old at this point. As the kids would say, that's so 90s. It's so early 2000s. <laughs> like we have to get over it. And it starts with getting over ourselves in every single way. So I hope you benefited from this very first official. The previous one was like a slow introduction to the the what and the why of Balance Bully Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to bring you solo narrative style casts like this every other week. And we will fill in the gaps and spaces with these amazing, incredible interviews with industry experts, global experts across the lane, not just entrepreneurs, entrepreneur leaders, VPs, execs, people who are juggling and handling just as much as everyone else and they are giving me an opportunity to peek into their closet behind the curtain and really see what's going on in their life and through that I hope and I pray and am already forwardly honored by the opportunity of you sticking around to not only listen and get some of the nuggets that are coming out from these solo style narrative style topic casts like today where it's just me and you having a conversation. I like to say our kitchen conversations, we're just, we're just having a conversation as well as when the experts come and they share their time with us. I'm looking forward to growing this podcast, to growing it with you, to engaging with you at another level. You mean something to me. I know there are many other podcasts that you could be listening to. You could be spending your car ride time, your bus ride time, your train ride time, your walking on the treadmill time very differently. And I appreciate you sharing this space and this time with me. Every episode is always going to have something a little bit uniquely different. We'll break it up into segments and you'll see that sometimes. And sometimes we won't because the conversation is just that good. These are unscripted, raw interviews. This is an unscripted, raw topic cast. The only editing that gets done is when we drop in the commercial and we add the intro music. That's it. That's all that happens. Everything, every suck in my teeth, every mm, every ah, you're going to hear it because there is no editing in the kitchen. That's what doesn't happen. And we get to be honest and authentic and raw. And 
flowable, if that's a word. It might not be. I just made that up. It's hashtag Nikitaism. I make up words all the time. Um, it, we'll, we'll get to be flawable. Um, and occasionally, I'm hoping that you guys will send in your questions. You can email me at asknikita at figpro.com, which will be somewhere in the description of this podcast below. So you'll have that. And email me questions that you want me to answer on the air. I will do that. You can also tweet me at Balance Bowley. I'm Balance Bowley on everything balance boldly and this just put hashtag ask Nikita so that way I can follow it as a specific question try not to DM me guys the direct messages can get a little overwhelming I mean if it's something really really personal just email it to me like if there's a personal question if you got something great out of something you heard send it to me and give me permission to share it um, with or without your name I always want to be mindful of that I am a clinician first um, you know, my background is a clinical social worker, so I always want to be very, very mine from a confidential space. And I know that's part of why people are ashamed is they're afraid that in this age of social media, everything's going to get blasted out. I will change your name to Dave if I need to. I'll just make sure to uh, keep the integrity of the question or the statement or the compliment or the challenge or the conflict that you had with something that I shared. And I want to honor you with that. So I look forward to um, getting to know you guys on the other side. I want to leave you with uh, just a little bit of a of a moment, a, g- a gentle honesty moment. For me, every opportunity that I have to share with anyone, I want to make sure that the impression I leave is always gentle and always honest. And just because I try to make it gentle doesn't mean it's going to feel good. <laughs> but leaving you with a little gentle honesty is kind of a, a two second recap of today's podcast. And honestly, today's gentle, honest moment is really about you taking a look in the mirror and looking at all that is plastered all over you. Every emotion that is sitting there festering, causing unwanted skin irritation and infecting your relationships with yourself and with others. I want you to look at it and begin the process. And it is a process. It's not going to all happen at once, like a dog shaking off mud from its body after playing outside in the rain. It's literally going to take some time. But start shaking your shame first. Start shaking your shame and start paying attention to how you shame other people so that you can really get a good look at what's on you because that's how it works. You shake, you look, you shake, you look, you keep shaking, and then you start scrubbing. And we'll get to all the scrubbing stuff later. But for right now, I just want you to have a moment with yourself when you really reflect on what you're doing to cause this negative ripple effect of other people feeling like they need to posture, starting with yourself. Until next time, just set an intention and enjoy the balance of your day. And when you do it, do it boldly. I ask that you please share this podcast. Make sure you subscribe, rate it, comment it, and share it, especially on iTunes. It matters. It matters in terms of how many people get to see us um, and how well they get to see us. And just share it all over social media, whatever you want. Share share with comments. Share, share, share. <laughs> and if you're not already a part of the Dreamers Blueprint community, come on over to literally, you could just go to dreamersblueprint.com and join. It's free. It's completely free at the community access level. And you get to literally come into the Facebook private group, which is deemed Kitchen Conversations. Ha, ha, how about that? Um, and have a conversation with everyone in the community and start and engage, not just sit on the wall and pay attention to, to what's happening, but to literally come in and get in the game with us. Um, start investing with yourself by really paying attention and joining the conversation. Um, as Solange says, and I don't want to give her full credit for it because I said it way before she did. Hello, but take a seat at the table. And that's what this is going to be about. Uh, Kitchen Conversations is a seat at the table and balance fully is the the volume that's booming out of that room. That's what this podcast is. It's it's all of our conversation booming out of that room um, with that. So I look forward to seeing you on the other side. And then until next time, enjoy the balance of your day.